I want to talk to you about the, uh, the Cloud Foundry UIA and, uh, and how you can use that in your own applications. Uh, if you're on a pivotal PCF, you've got the, uh, the SSO tile, and it's um, really something you can be looking at. The two broad ways in which you want to look at it is where you've got users, most of our applications have users, um, and how both your front end applications can, can do identity mapping and also authorization into back end resources and client applications themselves. Bit of an example application, airports in Australia. Um, back end resource server might give away a few resources if it's a guest. And, uh, and if you've authorized through from the front end app to the back end app, you get more resources available. So let's look at a couple of pictures that I've borrowed from, uh, for, from some SSO slides. If you're not authorized, then the back end resource server is just going to say, well, I don't know who you are. Here's an error, or here is you know, a few results. Um, the same would happen you know, if you're doing a curl, it's sort of like a front end app to a back end app. Um, and so then when we move on to the authorization flow in the next slide, which I get to see and you don't, um, password and authorization code flow are, are two of four. But you get that interaction, and we've all seen it, and there'll be a slide soon where you'll get to see that what the UIA looks like, and you've seen it before. You log in, and a, a code, an access code is granted, and then we pass that through from one app to the other. And this is how your microservice apps are going to be passing around what this user is allowed to do. You mightn't even know who the user is, but you know what they're allowed to do. If you've ever logged into Pivotal Web Services or a PCF tile, you'll have seen this flow, um, the, uh, the selecting of who I am. Perhaps it goes off to a back-end federated identity server. Uh, and ultimately, you'll get a token, and you'll log in with that without ever you know, passing your, your password. And then there's also applications where there's no user involved. It's just, can this app talk to that app? And what are they allowed to see? Are they allowed to read data, read and write data? We're at spring one, there are many spring examples. Um, I don't understand any of them because I'm not a spring person. But I get the feeling that most people at this conference aren't spring people. Anyway, um, so here are some screenshots of what I'm to understand is Java code with springy bits in it. And uh, it's very obvious which is the bit related to the topic, which is the to-do read. Um, and when you learn more about yeah, OAuth in general, you'll understand scopes. Um, this is more configuration, which yeah, you'll look at when you get to the repos. Um, the whole flow is really interesting of OAuth, and UIA is a way in which you can bring this in without having to delegate to some external thing. Um, the SSO connector, yeah, you know, more java -y stuff. Um, what's important about it is that it's something that you can install in your world. It's a separate Java Spring app that sits alongside. So if you're on uh, Pivotal CF, you've got the SSO tile you can install, and it acts like a service broker. You uh, provision basically new multi, it's a multi-tenant uh, UAA that you can provision um, isolated access to for your different repos. And I'd like to introduce the Quick UAA series of projects, which is open source, and you can deploy here in, to Cloud Foundry. You can deploy as many UAAs as you like. Um, What's notable about this is that it's a beautiful little CLI, and you can completely theme your UAA. So you can make it look like you know, your set of applications. The UAA is, is um, best described as ugly up until when you re-theme it. Um, so you can do anything you like to it. Now you might say, well, where have I ever seen a themed UAA? Well, if you logged into anything related to Pivotal, you will have seen the gratuitous ad at the top. That's a themed UAA. They themed it and then deployed it. Um, if you're a member of uh, the American government uh, and you're not the president, you might have used cloud.gov. It's also themed. There's also a version of uh, the Quick UA that deploys to Bosch, very handy locally or uh, in production. And the one on the next slide is, uh, is a homebrew version, which um, deploys you know, brew install and, and it runs locally. You can also go to the UAA source code and do Gradle uh, run. Uh, and build it that way. But the, the QAA CLI is very handy. It automatically sets up your, uh, uh, your credentials. The pictures, the Australian airports, which many of you are wondering, how many airports are there? Well, if you go to this repo, 
you'll find out how many airports there are, and it's way incredible. Um, now, finally, I don't know spring, so please come and help me make spring examples. Thank you.